Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while. Sit yourself down. I've been busy moving my way to Christchurch here, but here I am. Semi set up. <laughs> but not really, but we're already here, kicking ass at Hobby League. So today I'm bringing you my first place deck list from Hobby League yesterday. Bestial Horus. Nah, I'm not talking about your mum, mate. Horus. So yeah, this deck is like a really fun twist on the old uh, Dragon Link deck, but you know, like a Cold War missile pack, you're kicking out the rockets and you're putting in some Horus. <laughs> These cards came out in Age of Overlord, they've got some really great art on there, and I see Big Bungus, I see Discard, I see Draw, and I think we're chucking into a Dragon deck. So let's check it out with the deck list. Oof. Starting off with the Monsters now, starting off with the Bestial lineup, uh, 3 Lebellion, 3 Saranir. Uh, one Magnamut, sorry, Striker Dragon, and one Drusworm. Uh, yep, gets all your players going, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this combined with like Horus and Seti, this does so much work because that's pretty much full combo of two cards. Uh, you got Magnamut, because we're only allowed one, and one Drusworm. We do have a second one on the side there, but um, yeah, didn't really. Drusworm came up quite a bit, quite a bit, especially for setting up um, boards with IP, but yeah, I think one in the main deck is enough until you know that, like, this deal is going to be really effective against your opponent's deck. Uh, Horus Engine now, we've got one, two, three, M City, Glory of Horus, and one Happy Guns of Horus. Um, yeah, these are pretty much the only two you need. Um, I won one game yesterday because uh, people forgot about Happy's um, secret effect there, where if something else gets uh, removed from the field, you can target two cards in the graveyard, either shuffle them into the deck or add them to your hand, so it's like two free resources, it's phenomenal. Cool. Uh, our tuner of choice, uh, three vision resonator, uh, goes to the graveyard for any reason, searches the spell that searches another one. Um, if there's a level five or higher dark monster on the field, either side of the field, you can just like drop it there. And unlike the other resonators, it does not lock you into any extra deck mechanics, uh, normal summons, uh, three black metal, one red eyes darkness there, yeah, it's good, a lot of the times you don't even really need this, but it just puts a dark monster in the graveyard for you easily, searches for the darkness metal, which can facilitate combos, or at worst, it's a one card sphere, so that's where we are with that, uh, did play one Seafoot there, um, you normally don't normally normal summon this, you either just send it off with Foolish or you hope to mill it off Zombie Vampire and uh, that either recovers your like levies or or your um, Lebellions there. Uh, speaking of which, one Chaos Dragon Levy in there. Uh, shout out to Xavier for that, that's a beautiful print, thank you very much. Cool, and Hand Traps, we played 3 Ash Blossom, 3 Veiler. Um, this one, yes, non-negotiable. Run Ash Blossom, it's great. Uh, Effect Veiler on the other hand, um, just because, you know, I think this one's just meta dependent. Could be DD Crows, could be Drolls, could be Nibiru's. Uh, prop, if you're gonna put something here, definitely put it as either a light or a dark, so it can get your combos going, and like put stuff in the graveyard on your opponent's turn, so you can actually like bestial on your opponent's turn, that's brilliant. So yeah, I just went with um, Effect Veilers there. Uh, good card, stops a lot of stuff, stops rescue, uh, a lot of rescue ways plays, stops the old normal summon of like the tour guide against um, Unchained isn't it? And the normal summon pearlies if, or any other pearlies if they don't have street up, so yeah, good. And a pinch it's a tuner, not that that bloody matters because we're not running any level 7s or level 9s, but yeah, I mean, stranger things. Uh, so yeah, that is just the monsters we've got spells and traps to go first uh so i played uh three talents uh two king sarcophagus uh so yeah there's still quite a lot of hand traps in the meta at tournaments at the moment so yeah three talents first hole going first second just gets plays going or it you know nukes your opponent's hand so they can't play uh two king sarcophagus all you really need um as soon as you got one up it's normally sticking around for the rest of the game but in other, if that's the case, and you open one, you've got a second one to search off in city. So that's good. Uh, Crimson Gaia, this is what uh, Vision Resonator searches. It can add from graveyard or deck to hand, so you can constantly having like fresh tuners ready to go. Uh, one Foolish Burial, uh, great card. If you 
Open a bestial and foolish burial. You foolish burial, a vision resonator, resonator, search for the crimson Gaia, activate crimson Gaia, search for the tuner, and then suddenly you've got a level eight because you've got the, um, what is it? You've got, oh, I keep just said it's not. <laughs> Um, so you've got the vision resonator already in the graveyard ready to go for your um, Bastille there. Or you can like send Lebellions, or you can send Saranir, send a Lebellion. Yeah, you know, Foolish Bear, good guy. Uh, one for one, found myself citing the Sardis Special going second because uh, going second, that's two cards to get your plays going, which against most decks, this ain't resolving, ever. Like, I don't know, I don't know, even know if you need this, but nice to have nice to have there you go uh one chaos space and quarter century rare yes again nice to have and then finishing off the spells we've got brand regained uh yep very good card very good card cycles a lot of your resources keeps bringing back your bestials from the graveyard it's brilliant and um, finishing off we've got branded beast and three infinite impermanence there so 41 cards all up um main deck I think I'd only really change the one for one and like I said this Valor section this can be any three of anything you want so go hard this could this could be a thrust one of these could be a thrust but I don't know thrust I don't think is exceptionally good because like what are you gonna set if you're going first whereas talents just like yeah well yeah uh, extra deck now We've got one striker dragon we don't have the field spell, nothing to search, but it's just an easy link one, get the black metal into the graveyard, search, blah blah blah. That's all Striker Dragon's for. You pass butter. Uh, we've got one Hieratic Seal, still great piece of interruption there. Uh, IP Mascarina into Little Knight. Uh, yeah, brilliant. That into that on your opponent's turn is just mm, icing on the cake. Uh, one Dark. Yep, very good card, very good card indeed. Steals your opponent's little knight. <laughs> and speaking of which, sometimes um, if you little, if you don't need to use little knight or anything like that, you can just dark steal either one of these from your opponent and then go straight into access code talker. So never came up. Game's usually closed before that, but yeah, I can see an argument for that. Uh, Synchros now. Uh, we play Axel and Stardust Dragon. Um, yeah, level 8 turns into level 10, it's a dragon, it's great, not a lot of people run this, but I think it's just like a nice piece of surprise factor if they're just like, nah, surely you don't have the Stardust Dragon, it's just like, surely I do have the Stardust Dragon, but then yeah, Scarred into Red Dragon, make that, um, tribute that for Lebellion, you get a field wipe and then you get Lebellion on field and the special sums out as well, uh, great stuff, great stuff indeed. Um, also, secret ability with these with uh, Crimson Gaia. Book your opponent's field when you attack and then just destroy everything. Great. Uh, I played two Bestial Dispatter purely because I don't own a Chaos Angel at the moment and it could easily be Chaos Angel but same time I didn't find a lot of places where Chaos Angel would actually come in handy. Um, and to get the most out of Chaos Angel anyway, you need to use Vision Resonator and you need to use um, Lebellion, so you use the light and the dark to get both effects. So either way, this could easily be anything. Level 10. I almost considered running um, the Sword Soul level 10 as well, Chengqing or whatever. Could have been that as well. But yeah, I was kind of happy playing 2 Dispatter. Good. And then obviously like Bron de Fleur as well, like that is the level 10 that you use. And then two, two XYZs, a zombie vampire, hope harbinger. Yep, it's a light dragon, great, negates spells, spells, so that's really good. Doesn't even negate spells, it like takes them and also redirects attacks, so special ability on that. Zombie vampire, even if you just get to two level eights, being able to resolve this can just get all your combos online, so brilliant stuff. Um, you could also make the argument as well, if you didn't want to shell that, uh, I can see playing, like, cutting that for, like, maybe you want to play, like, uh, Galaxy Photon Lord or something. That's probably, like, the other best rank 8 that I can think of. You do have stuff like Lancelot and um, Zombie Steam, but, or Zombie Stein. So, yeah, 41 card main, 15 card extra. Uh, side deck, 
uh, Diddy Crow, um, you know, just in case against going against purely stuff or, you know, Runix or something, you know, something that can't, that the Bistials can't hit in the graveyard. This is just great um, to get rid of. It was also a uh, testing ground for me as well, like switching between games two and three where the Valor or Crow was better in the main. So again, just comes up to what you're playing against. Uh, second Drill Swim, in case you need to out Bistial your opponent or your opponent's actually silly enough to run a Light or Dark deck and you're going, lol, lol, lol thank you. Uh, we've got one Thrust just for searching for stuff, like when you're going second. Uh, we've got two Evenly Matched, Evenly Matched, uh, really good card, but like you don't want to brick on seeing multiples of them, so like Tactics acts like a third copy for that and then you just go bloop, bloop. Goodbye, Noble Knights. Uh, one Herald of the Abyss, searching off tactics for your purely matchup, and Harper's Feather Duster for, you know, back row heavy decks there. And so that's nine cards, and then obviously the two prime candidates, uh, Nibiru and Droll. I think every extra deck should be running those six at the moment, just for like, very combo heavy, and again, very combo heavy decks, but, you know, not everyone plays into Nibiru, but like, some decks just straight up have to so so that's the deck that took me to first place at locals yesterday not bad um got top four last week first place this week so yeah christchurch ain't shit but um yeah i don't care about like sharing out this list and stuff because you think i'm gonna play this tomorrow at ots hell no we're gonna <laughs> dice roll and we're gonna play something wild take care guys thanks for watching you'll be finding a lot of deck lists from the ots championships coming soon either on the Facebook page or if I'm at the actual tournament, you'll be finding profiles right here on the old YouTubes. Kakite.